Um, oh, isn't it a beautiful evening out there? Don't you love it when you can see so many stars in the sky? Oh, it's so magical. Did you ever try to count the stars? There are so many, <laughs> too many to count. <laughs> but that reminds me of a wonderful story that my grandma used to tell me. Do you want to hear it? Oh, goody. <laughs> the story of... Chris Kringle. Once upon a time, Twas Thanksgiving Eve in New York City on a street outside Grandma Kringle's apartment, St. Nicholas Lane. A beautiful starlit night embroidered the sky. Ten-year-old Chris Kringle, holding a sketch pad and pencil, pointed up at the sky, then drew a sketch of each of the toys he saw in the stars. With each new sketch Chris drew, a delighted Grandma Kringle held up a finger, keeping count. Ever since I was small, I'd look up and I'd see, I can see all the toys see and the stars just waiting for me. Then my grandma and I would count in the stars all the toys I could draw. As if they were ours. Twas again Thanksgiving Eve outside Grandma Pringle's apartment, but ten years later. Twas another beautiful starlit night, some say more glorious than anyone had ever seen before. Chris Kringle's neighborhood buzzed with shoppers, taxis, cars, and buses, the hustle and bustle of the impending Christmas holiday in the air. This time alone, Chris Kringle looked up at the night sky and put finishing touches on a sketch he saw in the stars. toy I've drawn and my bones just start to tingle. I just know that this season will be special for a toy maker day. Chris Kringle, did you see a new toy in the sky tonight? Yes sir, just to the left of Orion. This toy I want to make just for my grandma Angelica. Your grandma Angelica always said you'd make the greatest toy ever. I bet you Mr. Scratchingsworth will hire you back if he sees your new toy sketch. Oh, stop encouraging him, Henri. Every toy that boy makes goes snap, crackle, kabooey! That boy never watches. Look out, kid! Causing many a bingo. Out of my way! He never. Mr. Scratchingsworth, I wanted to show you my new toy skin. Of what? Another rocket ship that runs on hot cocoa and flies off to outer space? I've already been sued by NASA and Nestle. Kringle, you're fired. But I didn't even ask for my old job back yet. Just in case. Probably get the shingles. Yeah. Oh, Mrs. Martinez, my key doesn't fit. Oh, Chris Kringle, I let you stay here because of your grandmother Angelica, but enough is enough. Where is your rent? Well, with this new toy sketch, I just know I'm gonna find a perfect job any day now. Any day now? How about today? If you got no money to pay your rent, then I'm on your way. Santa Claus is gonna be at the Christmas parade tomorrow.
tomorrow? Why don't you ask him if he can use his connections to find you a job here in the Big Apple? That's a great idea, little one. But how did you know I'm out of a job? You've worn the same reindeer t-shirt every day for the past three weeks. Application keeps getting shelved But since the North Pole says no to me I can make my toys here in NYC As my grandma would say Please don't care It's more important why you're making toys Than where Than where Grandma, I promise you As sure as Santa sleeps bells jingle I'll make this toy and you'll be proud of your toy maker name toy maker name Chris Kringle Oh, I'm gonna stay up extra late just in case Santa arrives early. <sighs> Boy, I could really use some milk and cookies right about now. <laughs> in no time, twas a brisk and nipping Thanksgiving morning. With the Christmas parade about to begin, one would think joy would be the sentiment of the day. However, the mood was not so joyful. Fortunately, Santa was on hand to bring the Christmas cheer. <laughs> Mr. Reedy asked me to, and it's beyond a reasonable doubt that I'll ever get a Christmas bonus for performing my lawyerly de- Hey! Objection! Don't you know it's against the law to curb your garbage? Does this dusty, um, delightful staff belong to you? Yes, my Grandma Angelica gave it to me. She said it belonged to my Grandpa John. Your grandfather's last name wouldn't happen to be Kringle. Well, uh, yes, and I'm Chris Kringle. How did you guess my grandpa's last name? I've heard this staff described to me many times. You're a toy maker, I presume, Mr. Kringle? Yes! <laughs> well, not at the moment. I was hoping that Santa could help me find a job here in New York City where I could make the toy in my new toy sketch, but... Well, he's kind of busy today. Christmas bonus, here I come! Please come to this address first thing tomorrow morning. I'm a lawyer. And my boss might be able to offer you a job opportunity too good to resist. Roy G. Reedy Dolls Incorporated? Well, 
Wow, thanks so much! Miss uh, Horn, and make sure to bring that wonderful staff of yours. Absolutely. Thanksgiving at Roy G. Reedy Dolls Incorporated in New York City. But not everyone was a happy camper. Roy G. Reedy was in his drab and oh so dreary office, shouting into his drab and oh so dreary phone as from his open window he heard children singing Santa's Christmas parade song. What do you mean, Judge Daniel W. Drexel can't stop Claus's Christmas Parade song? Because of that blasted song, little brats everywhere are turning nice. But I, Roy G. Reedy, want them to be naughty. Naughty, naughty, naughty. Because when they're naughty, sales of my Tiffany dolls are an all-time high, and I get rich just like I deserve to be. <laughs> but no, Claus has to give everything away for free. Free. Oh, how that word pains me. Free, oh. <laughs> Did you just say Judge Daniel W. Drexel ordered me to have myself a merry little Christmas? <laughs> What is so merry about Christmas? The chill from the North Pole brings chattering teeth. Where is my lawyer when I need her? I'll read her the riot act. She'll feel the heat. Chair beat not very. What is so merry about Christmas? You're 30 minutes late, Miss Horn. As my lawyer, you were supposed to call Judge Daniel W. Drexel's nitwit clerk first thing this morning, not me. You're fired. I overslept dreaming of how I'm going to spend my Christmas bonus this year, Mr. Reed. But I've never paid you a Christmas bonus before, so why would I give you a Merry Christmas present this year? What is so merry about Christmas? Why all the hoopla at this time of year? Toy makers who normally snub me and rub me the wrong way are wishing me cheer. Jolly not very, what is so merry about Christmas? The sappiest song of the season is blasting from speakers in all of the stores. Now brats are nicer than they were and laughter from Claus's parade song. No, no I, I cannot take anymore. If Claus and, and his song win, win this season, season, Tiffany doll sales will drop through the floor. That's right, the profits and moolah will not flow. The, the nice list is growing, the naughties are slowing. We've, We've got, got to deal Claus a real blow. Happy, not very. La 
Yes, I'm sick of cranberries. What is so merry about Christmas? Wait, Mr. Reedy. There is something very merry and non-cranberry about Christmas. By double humbug. Permission to treat the boss as hostile? Granted. Directing your attention to Exhibit 1. Please read the section marked The Kringle Curse into the record. Ah, oh, The Kringle Curse? Read or the court will hold you in contempt! The Kringle Curse. Santa's brother John was head elf for which he was awarded a glorious green and gold staff. Driven by greed, however, John Kringle tried to convince the other elves to sell the toys they were making for money. And even though John was Santa's brother, Santa had to boot him out of the North Pole. Santa created the Kringle curse so that if John or any of his descendants snuck back into the elves' workshop, the elves would freeze so Santa could find the Kringle and boot him out of the North Pole again. Why are you dredging up this dratted dreary curse? Because we are going to reverse the Kringle curse and aim it right back at Claude, Mr. Reedy. We are going to send a descendant of John Kringle incognito into the North Pole. Once he becomes an elf and steps into the elves' workshop, the elves will freeze, toy production will come to a halt, and Christmas will be ruined! <laughs> ah, does John Kringle have such a descendant? Yes, a young toy maker named Chris Kringle. He is John Kringle's staff, and his grandmother's name is... Angelica! Precisely! <laughs> to know a thing about his being related to Claus or about the Kringle curse <laughs> as he was trying to ask Claus of all people for a job as a toy maker. <laughs> so I told him to meet me here this morning because you have a special job offer for him, Mr. Reedy. <laughs> oh my horn! You're a crafty little shark, aren't you? <laughs> so this is Roy G. Reedy Dolls Incorporated. <laughs> wow. Uh, thank you so much for the interview, Ms. Horn. And you must be Mr. Reedy. I am Chris Kringle. Mr. Kringle! Let's get right to it. About that job offer, it's a well-kept secret that when Santa's looking for a new elf, he asks Mr. Reedy for a recommendation. Yes, I've, I've written quite a few elf help books. <laughs> Claus, I mean Santa, and I are almost like brothers. And this Christmas, Chris, I'm recommending you. Oh, but... My elf application keeps getting rejected. <laughs> Claus, I mean, Santa said that's because you needed to apply for Apprentice first and then work your way up to elf. And Santa's all for you being an apprentice, uh, Mr. Kringle, but he wants to make sure he doesn't favor you because you just happen to have the same Kringle last name. So, Santa suggested we give you a new name and keep it a secret, even from him. Yes. Yes, a secret. And your new name will be... Daniel W. Drexel. After the famous judge. Oh, I... I don't know if my grandma would like me changing my name from Kringle. Claus, I mean, Santa has no problem with that, so why would your grandmother? Well, I guess if it's okay with Santa, then it would be okay with my grandma. <laughs> oh, but how do I get to the North Pole? I don't think the New York City subway goes that far. Oh, well, we can help you with that. 
Now, why don't you let me take care of that dusty old staff while you're in the North Pole? <laughs> With this globe on John Kringle's staff, we'll be able to keep an eye on Chris Kringle's progress and watch the North Pole implode as the Kringle curse unfolds. <laughs> well, Mr. Reedy, have you reached the verdict? If Kringle gets promoted from apprentice to elf, Miss Horn, you might just be found guilty of getting your Christmas bonus. <laughs> <laughs> now, as Chris had never been to the North Pole, he did not yet know of its beauty and majesty. Indeed, the North Pole is a wondrous place with more twinkling stars than can be counted. And on just the right night, which the night of Chris's arrival happened to be, the shifting reds and greens of the Aurora Borealis were more vibrant and magical than ever before. Staring up, wondering at the starlight, never knowing what it meant. But now I'm here, and I can almost touch them, and their meanings becoming clear. And it's more beautiful than I ever imagined. And all my dreams held so long inside. Have they finally happened? I've searched so far and looked so long. Am I finally home? Cause it's more beautiful than I ever imagined. All my dreams can A brand new world, a journey now before me, a pathway to the stars. All the clouds fading, now I can see horizons to where I've never been. And it's more beautiful than I. Whoa, I am so sorry, Miss... Miss? Noel. I've never met anyone with that name before. Hey, you're the first Noel. <laughs> What's your name, Apprentice? Crim... Daniel W. Drexel, after the famous judge. Wait, your name's not on here. Oh, well, Santa knows all about me. Somehow I doubt that. No, no, really, I was recommended. She's more beautiful. The Apprentice's Boot Camp is a festive and joyful place where for eons, apprentices have learned the toy-making skills they need to become elves in the elves' workshop. Anyone lucky enough to peek over Chris's shoulder as he wandered into the Apprentice's Boot Camp would glimpse 
Blackboards chalked with toy sketches, walls lined with shelves of toys, and work tables set with toy parts boxes. They would also spot a green and red book with gold lettering, Santa's Rule Book, on the floor under each apprentice's seat. Chris walked to his apprentice seat and plopped down next to fellow apprentices Sky Banner, Tinsel Splayed, and Garland Pie. I'm Sky Banner. And I'm Daniel W. Drexel, after the famous judge. Tinsel Splayed, Garland Pie, say hi to Daniel W. Drexel. Welcome, DWD. <laughs> Wow, if my grandma could see this place, she'd say, Skip ba doo ba dip ba ba doo ba yay! My name is Miss Noel. This is Apprentice's Boot Camp. Only those apprentices who survive will be promoted to elf. Look to your left, look to your right. Stand up, sit down, fight, fight, fight! <laughs> One of you won't be here. Everyone take out the copy of Santa's rule book that's under your desk and start memorizing. If you perform well today, we will begin toy making lessons tomorrow. I am beside my elf with joy. <laughs> oh, Drexel, quiet. Inside, the apprentices got to work. They didn't know that outside, some little busybodies were watching them, hoping to catch sight of what it would be like to be an apprentice. Will I ever learn Santa's rule book? Be all grown up. Have my own set of tools. Be an apprentice. apprentices were hard at work memorizing Santa's rules, Chris doodled toy sketches on the pages of his rule book. Is that doodle supposed to be me with some type of line across my forehead, Apprentice Drexel? I was imagining what you looked like when you were 10 years old, ma'am. Rule number 48, no doodling. Next time, that will be two demerits, Apprentice Drexel. Before we end for the day, we have some special visitors. <laughs> Welcome, 
apprentices welcome. <laughs> now, please give Ms. Noel your finest work so that each of you may join our head elf, Elmer, in the elves workshop on December 18th. <laughs> uh, Santa, hi. Um, the, uh, the first thing that I, Daniel W. Drexel, am going to do when I get to the elves workshop is to make a special toy just for Christmas, inspired by my grandma herself. Kids will love it. <laughs> now, 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 what's this about apprentices making their own toys? Nick, calm down. The boy meant no harm. Martha, everyone must follow the rules. Everyone? Everyone? Then stop sneaking milk and cookies after midnight. Now, oh, hush, Martha. This is serious. <clears throat> rules are rules. Santa, I am so sorry. Apprentice Drexel, I will see you in my office at 2100 hours. You better memorize Santa's rule book from cover to cover. Pronto. But I don't even understand what Zip! I... Zip! Zip! Oh, Nick, are you okay? That young whippersnapper Drexel wants to make his own toy! Oh, where's my alka seltzer? Please don't worry, sweetheart. Daniel's just, just a sparkle-eyed apprentice. And John was just my brother, but you, you remember the chaos we had when the elves were making their own toys. Oh, John tried to take advantage of it and turn the elves' workshop into a toy company. A, a toy company? So I had to create that darn Kringle curse. No, 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 no. If Drexel doesn't follow the rules, he's out. Nick? Would now be a good time to talk about having a toy competition this year? Uh, I'm sorry, Martha. I, I, I have too much on my mind this season. It, it, it'll have to wait until next year. Oh, Nick, that's what you said last year. And the year before that. And the year before that. And now... Chris just knew he would be in a ton of hot water if he didn't memorize Santa's rule book. He sweated as he paced back and forth outside the apprentice's quarters, trying his darndest to remember every rule. But in no time at all, all warnings flew right out of Chris's head. Chris took out his pencil and drew in Santa's rule book the toys he saw in the night sky. Little did he know, Mrs. Claus was looking over his shoulder, watching him draw. Oh, um, Mrs. C, I, I know that I'm supposed to be studying Santa's rule book, but I've never seen so many toys in the stars. My grandma and I used to count them every night. Please don't tell Santa I messed up again. Any childlike spirit can be hushed by the busyness and rush. Rainy days have the most amazing way of making you Doubt yourself, but don't ever stop believing, disbelieving in all of the magic you can do. You see, there's something wonderful in you. Now give your dreams all they need, and your heart every chance to believe.
a box Your dreams no longer sought And all the simple joys of hidden toys In the stars are lost But don't ever stop like Santa's younger brother. Oh, I'm just being a silly old Christmas goose. Do you know that Santa used to draw all the toys he saw in the stars? That's cool. But then why does Santa have a rule against us making our own toys? It's an old rule and old rules die hard. I'll smooth things over with Santa, so no worries. Oh, I see. You're also worried about Evelyn. I worry about her, too. Oh, hello, dear. I was looking for you. <laughs> um, thanks, Mrs. C. And I'll see you at 2100 hours, Ms. Noel. That's, um, uh, that's right. 2100 hours on the dot. <clears throat> Rule number 51. Be on time. Rule number 51, be on time, I won't forget. Uh, that apprentice has trouble written all over him. Speaking of trouble, come help me convince Santa to have a toy competition this year. I don't think it's a good idea to distract the apprentices and the elves from their work. What if the elves actually enjoyed a break from their work and came back raring to go? Uh, we are having a toy competition this year for your own good. You like it or lump it? It was later that evening in Evelyn Noel's neat as a pin quarters. On Evelyn's desk was a photograph of her mother holding a toy snow leopard cub with beautiful piercing eyes. As she gazed out of the window at the star-filled sky, she didn't see Elmer, head of the elves, sneak up behind her. Mother, you used to say that a sky filled with so many stars meant a wonderful thing was in store for me. Mother, what could it be? Turn around, toots. Your shining star is right behind you. Elmer! Are you sleepwalking? What are you doing in my room? If I'm sleepwalking, that would make you a dream of love. And that would make you my nightmare before Christmas. <sighs> Some little birdies told me that Evelyn needs consoling because Santa yelled at her in front of the apprentices. Elmer, you're cuckoo. Now, please leave. Apprentice Drexel will be here any minute. Are you going to expel the loser? Do let the door hit your big fat ego on the way out. Evelyn, you are one hard-headed woman, but that won't stop Elmer. Never been the kind of guy to blow my own horn. But something special arrived on the day I was born. 
to eat the fact you gotta put a deal Walking in style in my green suede shoes Mama always said that I was one of a kind Other elves try to keep up but I leave them far behind I'm making you an offer, how can you refuse When I'm walking in style in my green suede shoes I'm walking, I'm walking in style Man, me be the one who makes you smile Walking, walking in style I'm classing every elf by an off pole mile I get nothing but rave reviews Walking in style in my green suede shoes I'll be the top dog, linchpin, kingpin, son of a gun My talent is grossly underused But still walking in style in my big trade shoes I walk it, I walk it in style Man, to be the one who makes you smile Walking, I walk it in style Out class and every L by an old cold mile I'm reaching for the top I paid my dues and I'm walking in style in my green suede shoes. Rule number 51, be on time, and here I am at 2100 hours exactly. Actually, you're 15 minutes late. No way. You are absolutely right. I want an explanation about your outburst about making your own toy. Oh, well, I didn't know about rule number 26 until I read Santa's rule book. Rule number 27. No, I... I could swear it was rule number 26. I'll show you, right here in Santa's rule book. <gasps> oh, no, my mother's photograph. broken. Oh, uh, careful. It looks like the glass is broken. May I take a look? Wow. Even Santa couldn't make something as wonderful as your mother. She's lovely. Was lovely. She died when I was 10. I knew it. When I drew your picture earlier today, you were 10 when you got that frown line. Well, my grandma died when I was 10 too. That's when I got my frown line, just like yours. See, my parents, they never wanted me to become a toy maker. They said that my grandpa did something bad when he was a toy maker and they didn't want me to follow in his footsteps, but my grandma Angelica, she said that she could see inside my heart and knew that one day I would make our family proud. Angelica, what a beautiful name. My mother had a lovely name too, Lodinia. Did your mother give you this fantastic toy snow leopard in the photograph? Yes, just before she died. I called him Rory. <laughs> um, somewhere I lost him though. <clears throat> anyway, apprentices can't make their own toys or they don't become elves, understood? Apprentice Drexel? Apprentice Drexel? Apprentice who? Oh, oh, right, <laughs> brain freeze for a minute there. Um, uh, sorry, anything that you say, ma'am? This boy is so disruptive and naive With a kind of optimism 
only a child could conceive Like a comet flashing through my peaceful sky That was so calm, how I wish upon a star That I could talk with you, Mom the wee hours of the morn, a time when no creature should be stirring, especially not an apprentice. There was Chris in the apprentice's quarters, feverishly making a toy while Skye, Tinsel, and Garland slept in their bunks. He was making a gift for Evelyn. It was the toy snow leopard cub, Rory, that was in the photograph in Evelyn's quarters. Chris had no idea of the Christmas magic in him and was astonished when Rory sprang to life. When the other apprentices heard all the commotion, Chris feared his Christmas goose was cooked. I'll turn myself into Ms. Noel in the morning. You think we're going to report you? <laughs> we haven't been this excited since... Ladybugs. Oh, if anyone saw Rory, they'd say... Skip ba doo ba dip ba ba doo ba <laughs> We knew we needed someone. Yeah, someone with your class. A toy maker that could get us through the rules with a touch of pizzazz. A dreamer toy maker with a heart as good as gold. A special person with that skip ba doo ba dip ba ba doo ba We knew we needed someone, a toy maker that shares our dreams. We knew we needed someone, that someone is you, 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 that someone is you. And now all 
for one. And one for all. We'll make it together or together we'll fall. Standing strong against them all. All, all for one and one. get expelled for making their own toys. A short time later, in Evelyn Noel's quarters, Evelyn was none too happy when Elmer pounded on her door. Elmer, why are you waking me up at two o'clock in the morning? I told you to expel that jerk, Drexel. He made this, like, silly-looking snow leopard. Rory? Did you prepare an order of expulsion? Right here, toots. Apprentice Drexel, you are expelled for making your own toys, effective immediately. But I made Rory because you miss your mother. Wake up, little cub. She's here. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, how is this possible? It's not! I just know it's a puppet on a string. <laughs> Wait till Santa finds out you've been making toys, Drexel. It's gonna be jailhouse rock for you. Elmer, Apprentice Drexel made Rory as a gift. There's no rules against that. Only the rules of common sense. Who gives out gifts before Christmas? Huh, huh, huh? Daniel, everything, even the night sky, has rules. The North Pole is no different. I should be going too. Daniel, wait! <laughs> All my dreams held so long I inside. never gaze along Cause I feel you Will beside never me never happen You'd say do not fear Have they finally Have they not happened? to fear Mother dear Evelyn You are my North Star The North Star tonight has shown my North A pathway Star. to my home the apprentice's boot camp. A full-blown showdown was about to begin. I know you don't like it, Elmer, but Apprentice Drexel is the most talented toy maker ever. You mean the most talented rule breaker. Frankly, I'm surprised we're considering Drexel as an elf candidate at all. Now that Drexel's Ms. Noel's hunk of hunk of burning love, she wants to make sure he sticks around. Is this true, Evelyn? 
But the only hunk around here is the hunk of rock in Elmer's gargantuan head. Good. Well, since Elmer thinks that Drexel is unqualified to be an elf, his application is hereby rejected. It's not fair. Elmer's just jealous. Don't be cruel, Evelyn. I'm not one teensy bit jealous. I too. Am not. I am not. Do not say I that I am jealous. Please, 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 please. What the holly is going on? Well, Drexel is trying to get out, but it shouldn't happen. I have an announcement. We are having a toy competition tomorrow night. Evelyn, when the apprentices arrive, please inform Daniel that he will become an elf if he wins. So, now you're the boss, Mrs. Claus? Ho, ho, ho. Elmer, please inform Drexel that you will be the judge of the toy competition. Ho, ho, ha. Elmer, Evelyn, I need to have a private chat with Mrs. Claus. <clears throat> I'm sorry, Martha. Even if Drexel wins the toy competition, I will not allow him to become an elf. I have no intention of sanctioning that rule-breaking boob. I happen to remember marrying a rule-breaking boob who made toys by candlelight late into the night. Toys that he saw in the stars, just like Daniel does. I, I didn't know such thing. Does this ring any jingle bells, Nick? Holly, your first Christmas present to me. You may not recognize Holly with her torn ear and her must fur from all those hugs I gave her those many years ago. Back then, the spirit of Christmas was so alive in you that you caused Holly to fly around us as we kissed under the stars. Yes, I did, didn't I? This Christmas, I was hoping to have that rule-breaking boo back. Later that day, Santa came face to face with the consequences of his decision not to promote Chris. Welcome, everyone. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, and thank you for all of your hard work in this year's Apprentice Boot Camp. <laughs> um, uh, 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 Mrs. Claus will now read the names of all of the, uh, yes, uh, the, 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 the new elves. <laughs> <clears throat> Carol, Belle, Star, Yule, Faith, Tannen, Wreath, Joy, Sky, <gasps> Tinsel, and Garland. <laughs> I hope to see you, Daniel, at the toy competition tomorrow night. Evelyn will explain. What did Mrs. C mean, Ms. Noel? Daniel still has a chance to become an elf if he wins the toy competition. Oh, and Daniel will win. Hands down. There's a hitch, isn't there, Ms. Noel? Sure is. It starts with an L and ends with the mer. So I'd surrender if I were you, Dirksel. <laughs> oh, blue, oh Christmas. blue Christmas. May I stay in the apprentice's workshop for just a little while, ma'am? I guess so, Daniel, but why? Because Daniel needs a quiet place to think. <laughs> Come on, troops. Before I leave, I just want to let you know how much I love the name Daniel. <laughs> well, one day soon I hope I'll tell you the whole crazy story about how I got the name Daniel. <laughs> and how much I love how you don't mislead a girl about who you are, like other guys do. Anyway, Roy and I will be rooting for you tomorrow, Daniel. At the same time, back in New York City, Ms. Horn and a fit-to-be-tied Reedy 
watched the goings-on in the glass globe atop John Kringle's staff. We've had near misses with that bungler Kringle before, but this is the worst yet. The North Pole's not imploding, Miss Horn. Your disaster for a plan A is right before our very eyes. With that nitwit Elmer as judge of the toy competition, the Kringle curse is doomed! Elmer is not going to do me out of my Christmas bonus. Mr. Reedy, may I have your shoes? My shoes? Yes! We'll put a spell on your shoes. Elmo will wear them, and you'll have complete control to put that elf on ice. Oh, I love it! And then Christmas can finally be mine. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the apprentice's boot camp, Chris knew that he would have to make the most wonderful toy to win the toy competition. As he racked his brain for what to make, he stumbled across Holly, who, unbeknownst to him, was the very toy that Santa had given to Mrs. Claus many years ago. Seeing Holly, Chris couldn't help but to fix her. Toy competition, Drexel will lose. Kicked out of the North Pole with my green suede shoes. Claus is Christmas ruin, my revenge complete. The Kringle curse will knock him off his feet. And all my Tiffany doll sales will be big, fat, and sweet. Elmer, now listen to me. It's time to trade those green for purple suede shoes. Magical shoes will master your mind, giving Reedy control over you. You'll vote for Chris, so he will win, and the plot begins. I know, Nick, your magic is still alive, it's just buried inside. You're still the man I fell in love with who made Holly fly. Let down your walls, dare to see. Daniel is just who we need. The time has come for something extraordinary to happen. Can I be strong? Too good to be true, his honest heart and zeal. Mother, can you tell me, can he be real? Do I dare let do down I these dare walls? Let down these walls? Do I dare? The time, time has come, come to me. Take a step into uncertainty.
was Toy Competition Day, December 16th. Chris Kringle had no idea that Reedy had taken control of Elmer to make sure that Chris won the toy competition. But Chris didn't need to know about Reedy's plan because Chris was raring to win all on his own. Christmas Hall in Santa's castle is the stuff that children's dreams are made of. Filled with splendid toys of today and yesteryear and radiating glistening golds, greens and reds. This year, Christmas Hall was also decked out for the toy competition. Toy parts boxes and toy making tools were set up on tables for the contestants. Go Daniel signs, brilliant balloons, and Christmas streamers dotted the room. And a majestic Colorado blue spruce adorned its own corner. The spirit of Christmas filled the air. Contestants, contestants, let Mrs. Claus's first annual best in toy competition begin, said Mrs. Claus. The contestants ran in, picked up their toy parts boxes and tools, then dashed out to start making their toys. But everything was not quite right. Elmer was acting more peculiar than usual. Now that I have complete control over Elmer, I'm able to say and do whatever I want. This is going to be as sweet as Christmas pudding. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Evelyn? Claus, I mean Santa. It seems she's being delayed. Perhaps I can assist. Claus, are you feeling all right? You don't sound like yourself. I'm jolly, old St. Nicholas. Well, I, I need to speak to Evelyn about this toy. You mean about Holly? How did you know her name was Holly? Just a lucky guess. Now, what about Holly? Well, just yesterday, her, her ear was torn and her fur was threadbare. And, well, I, I need to find out who fixed her. You'll find the culprit is Daniel W. Drexel, after the famous judge. Thank you, Elmer. I think. Ah, Drexel, I have a question for you, and I need a straight answer. Oh, what a wonderful toy, Santa. I tried my best to fix her last night, but I was a little rushed. Well, how did you fix her so perfectly? Oh, I don't know. I just... Imagine what I want a toy to look like, and then my hands go to work on their own. I see. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing your toy. Why, thank you, sir. Now, you should run and join the other contestants, son. Don't worry, Evelyn should be here any minute. <laughs> <gasps> Holly looks just like the day you gave her to me, Nick. How did you do it? Daniel fixed her. I asked him how, and he said he just didn't know. Martha, would, would you mind if I went and gave Elmer my two cents about who should win the competition? Back in Reedy's office, Reedy and Ms. Horn watched in the glass globe atop John Kringle's staff as Chris and the other contestants took their places at the tables. Contestants, ready your toys. <laughs> this is what you call innovation. I think it's very crafty. Not easy to make things fly. <laughs> very 
Very good, my dear boy. Very good. <laughs> um, I saw my toy in the stars, Santa. Oh, brother. Oh, why, hello there, little fellow. Just imagine with your heart what you want him to do, Santa. Just grand, son. Claus, I mean Santa, we have found our winner and newest elf. <laughs> Welcome to the fold, Daniel. <laughs> Skip a doo, Grandma, our toy won! <laughs> In Reedy's office, Reedy and Ms. Horn were beside themselves with evil joy that Chris had won the toy competition. His mission successful, Reedy snapped his fingers to break off his control of Elmer. Elmer snapped back to his old self. But Elmer immediately noticed what no one else did. Here and there, elves were slowing down, then freezing for a split second. Could it be the Kringle curse? Elmer rushed to tell Santa and whomever else he could that the Kringle curse had come to the North Pole. Chris overheard Elmer and worried to himself that he might be the Kringle curse. Then more strange happenings began. Brother John worked in this very shop. He made the greatest toys you ever did see. Then he got to thinking inside him burned greed. He tried to get the elves to make the toys for money. <gasps> so Santa Claus was forced to make up a curse to keep John Kringle and his family out of the elves workshop. Now if they ever get in, even just one foot, all the elves will freeze. All the elves will freeze. around me have you heard the word elmer spreading rumors about the kringle curse hear that when it happens before you can even think you'll freeze right in your footsteps as fast as you can wink as fast as you can wink and that's pretty fast now listen up this isn't a joke just wait till you're frozen solid standing solid like an oak I don't get it. Why would Santa put a curse on us? We're so sweet. It's the Kringle curse? Why would Santa create a curse to cause all of the elves to freeze? <laughs> Just because one of John Kringle's descendants enters the elves' workshop? <laughs> Descendant of John Kringle? Don't worry about it, DWD. The Kringle curse is a lot of. Oh. What the? Dickens? Sky? Guys? What? What have I done? The 
The Kringle curse is real. What did Mr. Reedy and Ms. Horn know? Now, Chris was surely at his lowest, not knowing what to do. How Chris wished Grandma Kringle could be there to guide him. Grandma, why didn't you tell me I couldn't become an elf because of the Kringle curse? Chris, the first time I held you as a baby in my arms, I felt the spirit of Christmas alive inside you as I had never felt in anyone. I was afraid that if you knew about the Kringle curse, that spirit would soon die. I know now that will never happen. If anyone can make this turn out right, it's you. Just know in time you'll find the pathway through. These problems have a way of working themselves out. So don't worry yourself or be full of doubt. Just remember any race worth winning must be won. And every step a new beginning till you've begun. You see there's hope. Step at a time, you'll find what in your heart you do. There will be a way, a bright new sunny day. There's always a pathway. of the way I would be the best toy maker you would always say so I dreamed bigger and brighter all because of you and every dream in my heart you taught me could come true you said any race worth winning must be and every step a beginning till you've begun. You see, there's always a pathway through. Just take a step at a time, you'll find what in your heart you knew. What do I do? I'm so confused. Maybe your toy switch, your heart, was meant to bring our family together to start anew. So, so the, the door can begin to open to dreams, your dreams. There's always a pathway through. Just take. need to find the Kringle and expel them from the North Pole immediately! Santa, that won't be necessary. What? Evelyn, I tried to tell you yesterday. My real name is Chris Kringle. My grandparents are John... And Angelica Kringle? Say it isn't true! Santa, 
I don't know why Mr. Reedy and Ms. Horn didn't tell me about the Kringle curse. If I'd known about it, I never would have come to the North Pole. The Christmas parade song turned naughty children to nice. I should have realized that my brother John would try to seek revenge because of it. <sighs> Santa, your brother is Mr. Reedy, who is my grandpa John? Yes, Chris. Many years ago, your grandfather tried to turn the elves' workshop into a place of profit instead of a place where dreams come true. I tried to reason with him, but, but he just wouldn't listen. So I had to banish him and create the Kringle curse. And every year since then, my brother has tried to ruin Christmas. Santa, I promise to do whatever it takes to set things right. It's time to end the Kringle curse, sweetheart. I'm sorry. I just can't risk that my brother won't try to use the boy again. Thumpity thump thump thumpity thump thump look at Kringle go. Santa, please tell Evelyn that I will do whatever it takes to make amends. Without Chris, time slipped by slowly in the North Pole Christmas bells chiming dispiritedly with each passing hour. Subdued activity had returned to the elves' workshop as the elves had unfrozen and slowly got back to work. Now that Kringle's gone and all your teeth have stopped chattering, we can finally have ourselves some merry little business. We've lost a whole 24 hours, so make like reindeer and hoof it. I want to see some activity. We've lost enough time because of that rat fink Kringle. Elmer, let's set the record straight on Daniel W. Drexel. I mean, Chris Kringle. He is the best toy maker ever, and the only reason he's not here is because he has the wrong last name. Where do you think you're going, Banner? I'm going back to my quarters, Elmer, until Chris Kringle and the spirit of Christmas return to the elves' workshop. Good riddance to Banner, too! Oh, really, Elmer? Well, we're all for one. And one for all! Hey! Just wait one ram a lam a ding dong minute! <laughs> Evelyn, dear? What's wrong? I've made such a mess, Santa. I saw the world through Chris's eyes, and what a beautiful world it was. And I threw it all away just because of who his grandfather is. I made a mess too, of a lot of things. Hush now, I promise I'll bring him back home. Oh, Martha, what can I do? E even if I can find Chris, we've already lost too much time to meet the Christmas deadline. Don't ever stop believing, disbelieving in all of the magic you can do. There's something I'm going to find our grandnephew, Martha. Twas later that same day, back in Roy G. Reedy's office in New York City, Reedy poured a celebratory drink for Ms. Horn, who looked dejectedly at her Christmas bonus trip. To a very merry Christmas for me, and a nice big fat Christmas bonus check for you. <laughs> 
Sorry, Chris, but if you're looking for a job here, Kringles need not apply. Ms. Horn, please advise your boss that I'm not just any Kringle. As your lawyer, Mr. Reedy, I must also remind you that Chris is your grandson. Please do tell him what you told me about your family. I think he deserves to know. What did you tell Ms. Horn about your family, Mr. Reedy? Only that I didn't know that I had a descendant. I bet you said that because you miss Grandma Kringle and having a family. You found me out, Chris. Yes, I missed her dearly, but she obviously didn't miss me. When we arrived in New York City, what a fight we had. She told me she hated me and that she swore she would make sure that I would never see her again. And I never did until you walked through my door with your grandmother's eyes. Grandma Angelica told me on her deathbed that she always regretted not patching things up with you, but she never said anything about a Kringle curse or the North Pole. But I do know that she died of a broken heart because she didn't forgive you. And Angelica died of a broken heart over not patching things up with me? Yes. She did, Grandpa Kringle. Grandpa Kringle. Feels strange to hear that name. But no, Chris. I have spent eons holding a grudge against Claus for kicking me out of the North Pole and creating the Kringle curse and long-held grudges darken the soul. Besides, I am about to beat my brother for the first time in my life. So get out of here before I ask Judge Daniel W. Drexel to throw you out. Ho, ho, ho. Nick, Nick, Nick. Are you here to pay a visit to your dear younger brother? I had a younger brother, but he chose greed instead of good. I had an older brother, but he chose a curse instead of kin. He also chose to humiliate me, placing the Kringle curse on me in front of the other elves. No, 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 I never meant to humiliate you, but you, you refused to change. And what a wonderful name you gave me as a Christmas gift on my exit. Roy G. Reedy. Roy Greedy! Grandpa Kringle, I bet Santa was really angry with you when he gave you that name. And I also bet... He later realized it was the biggest mistake of his life. John, Chris is absolutely right. I never thought I'd hear you say that, Nick. Oh, I should have said it eons ago. Chris is the best darn toy maker who ever lived, John. Well, that's what you used to say about me. <laughs> You always were a better toy maker than I was, that's for sure. We could have made a great team, Nick. I think you both still can. Chris, I will end the Kringle curse so that you can come back to the elves' workshop with me. Santa. I'll have to pass. I'm going to spend Christmas with Grandpa Kringle, if he'll let me. You would do that for me, grandson? For you and for Grandma Kringle too, yes I would, sir. There is, however, another choice. There can be magic when we let our hard feelings go Where once there was only darkness Love begins to grow I believe anything can change If we try to see That letting go of all the hurt Begins with the words we speak When we say I never meant to hurt you 
gonna let the healing begin with these words. I forgive you. I forgive you. Let this be the beginning, not the end. And let new hope in when you say, I forgive you. Just share your heart and put those fears away. Look up at the stars above and make a wish that someday you'll both be in a new world where you can be free from all the hurt between your hearts. Believe and it will be. I forgive you. I never meant to hurt you. Let all the pain we held so long be gone. Now that I forgive you, I forgive you. I never meant to hurt you. Can we pick up where we left off, start again? I forgive you. I forgive you, brother. I forgive you. Santa, would you be willing to welcome Grandpa Kringle to spend Christmas in the North Pole? I bet it'd make Mrs. C's days merry and bright. Indeed it would. <laughs> well, John, what do you think? I, I, know, I know you have a business to run. <laughs> well, I guess that having a family again means far worth more to me than the tons of dough I could make from the sales of my Tiffany dolls this season. <laughs> Roy G. Reedy Incorporated is officially closed for Christmas. Glorious! <laughs> I hereby end the Kringle Curse! was another beautiful North Pole starlit night, but not everyone was happy to see the stars. Mother, the stars told me something wonderful was in store for me. I hope I didn't let it slip through my fingers. Turn around, toots. Your shining star is right behind you. <gasps> Um, I wanted to show you something special that I saw in the stars. <gasps> Rory! Chris and Evelyn's Aurora Borealis. <laughs> <laughs> Evelyn's heart. Always. <gasps> <gasps> oh my gosh! Chris, it's Roy G. Reedy! Oh, uh, no, Evelyn! That's my grandpa! John Kringle, he's going to spend Christmas with us. Very nice to meet you, Grandpa Kringle. I hope you have a Merry Christmas with us. My dear, I know I will have a very Merry Christmas this year and for years to come. She's beautiful, just like your grandmother Angelica was. Now, just one minute. What's going on here? I believe these green suede shoes belong to you, Elmer. May I approach? Feliz Navidad, baby. And your name is? Miss Horn, but you can call me Irma. I got my Christmas bonus. Christmas bonus? Shh. No further questions. Hey, guys, we still have tons of Christmas gifts to make. Elmer, round up the elves. Miss Horn, round up the elves' children, too. And Grandpa Kringle, 
We're gonna need everybody to roll up their sleeves. was Christmas Eve, and thanks to Kris Kringle, the presents were ready to be delivered. Christmas was saved. Everyone at the North Pole, including Santa and Elmer, knew it was time for Kris to write the next chapter of the North Pole story. And so, because of Kris Kringle's toy sketch, his heart, as Grandma Kringle would say. Grandma Kringle got her wish. The Kringle family reunited and started anew. And young Chris Kringle continued to make the toys he saw in the stars as he began his journey to become the next Santa Claus. Merry Christmas to all, and away! Merry Christmas to all! Miss Magic. Dancing in the air. And a dash of Christmas stardust. To fill each heart with cheer.